Pillars of Eternity, the White March, continues. Welcome back, everyone, to more Pillars of Eternity, the White March expansion. We are here in Russetwood. Let's explore Russetwood. It's a rather large map, so it should be fun. Oh, shit! Winter Wolf got fucked up. The wolf lies in the snow, panting with exhaustion and pain. An arrow has pierced its foreleg, jutting gruesomely from the animal's flag. I better put it out of its misery! You take a firm hold of the wolf's scruff. The creature begins to thrash and panic, but you pin it down easily. That done, it is a simple matter to slip a blade into the wolf's neck. Within a scant few moments, the beast goes still. Wait a minute, could that have been a companion? I'll save that motherfucker if it's going to be a companion. That's the only way I get out of doing something evil. Okay, got some weird shit going on here with my save game, so I had to go back to this place before we got into a fight. Causes it to fight. So let's see if we can get our resolve up, which I believe we can through magical means. Not with that shit, though. We can calm the wolf. You approach the wolf slowly, speaking in a low, calm tone. Gradually, the wolf stills, though it still gazes up at you fearfully. Your efforts to calm the wolf seem to have paid off, for the creature remains still as you work. You carefully pull the arrow free and bind the wound. Barely an instant after you finish, the wolf suddenly scrambles to its feet. It regards you for a few long moments and then sets off through the trees at a limping trot. I don't know, maybe we should let the wolf live. It'll be a cool, like, you know, might get some wolf pack shit later. And we got a silver arrow. That's why you hang on to your magical items. You can do shit like that. By the way, we do have an upgrade in the house, a picture upgrade. Since Ronstock has changed his armor, Sai has decided to bless us with more of his artwork. The raiment of whale's eyes are here. And as you can see, you can see the little eyes that Sai put into the cloak. And we have a new version of Ronstock's face. That was the old portrait. And a little bit closer up, you can actually see a little bit of eye coming out of there. So, once again... Sai has amazed us with his work. And yes, godlikes heads can change just like that. The more evil they come, the more fucked up it gets. Thank you, Sai. Looks beautiful. I decided to let him live because that silver arrow yes. is important in combining with another weapon to get a soulbound bow. So the wolf, wolf is lucky. I feel like the music is still loud as balls.
Thought he might become a little follower companion, but hey, magical weapon out of it's even better. Hey. It's like a little football skirmish here in the beginning. You gotta like get your defense, blocking offense. Little Gronstock has is pretty badass. Gonna combust your wounds and blind you bitches. See ya. That's it. Hey, this asshole has my same helmet. Not anymore. That stag helm. As you wish. As you wish. It's from a famous movie. something here but I don't know if that we can find it until we get the quest for it. Which I think we have right here. Very large wolf is praying the village is rustled according to thirst the wolf makes its lay in the area. Still don't have a definitive guide on where all the secrets are, but what is it? We'll do our best to get them all. Eloth has a knack for finding them, even out of search mode. This cracked wooden staff is nearly buried beneath the frost and snow. To your senses, the gathered essence shines like a beacon. The camp is long abandoned, and what remains is buried beneath a layer of ice and snow. The staff seems to be the sole item of note. You reach out with your watcher's senses and feel a drifting soul surge forward as if eager to be heard. A feeling of fear and urgency ripples through you. Here, across the distance, spanned by time and identity, you know only that you are out of time. Ow. <clears throat> Did you think to escape me by climbing a mountain? I would have tracked you across the sea, thief. Please, master, have mercy. I, I kept the grimoire hidden safely away, and I can take you to it. The book is nothing. If you had studied a little longer, you might have learned that. But no apprentice of mine will steal from me and live. Wait, no! 
He got smoked. Yes. Lay in low. Yeah, uh, there's a secret. This yellowed piece of parchment shows a rough drawing of a cluster of trees, but little else. It could be anywhere in the White March. Quest item, so we definitely want that. Yes. Hello! He's a nice troll over here. Nice and quiet. Get us a little fireball off. Oh, Aloth. Ah, I shall deal with this one. We fucked that up, whatever you did. I'm not reading that spell right. Oh, that's around the caster. Dig, dig. You know what I want? I want to top the fireball. The fifth Sidewinders. Okay, so they're like little lizard men, basically. Yes. Sagawan from D and D. Nice troll on my side right now. Oh, Beat my paladin's ass. Motherfuckers! 
object to I Guys in the little blow guns are so much for decent me. opponents. <laughs> Fuck with this poison healing shit. Don't think it matters. It wears off after combat. What is it? We got a wrenched knee. Minus two movement speed. And an ice troll heart. Part of the ingredients we need for Rayfield's cure. We decide to cure him. Well. Here soon. Oh, hello. Don't see many on these roads, and the few we do are hunters, woodcutters, or smugglers. She cocks an eyebrow at you and gives you a half smile. She holds herself with confident grace, conspicuous holster slung over one hip. Beyond her is a wagon loaded with supplies. Manacles dangle from one end. Defala, is it? You're the slaver who's after Aleph. Well, so much for the subtle approach. And here I was, thinking we'd found the last pleasant company on the road. I'm after him, all right. Her hand drops to her gun. He's going to answer for his crimes in Raid Saris. And one way or another, you're going to stay out of my way. Wait, his crimes? What crimes? Didn't tell you that part, did he? First off, he chose his indentureship. Had to make up for some bad luck at cards, I hear. She waves her associates down, but her hand remains on her gun. More importantly, he murdered his master's son. Thirteen-year-old boy. Killed him as he fled. He didn't mention that part. You want to help me bring him to justice? Run on back and tell him you dealt with us. When he ducks out of town, we'll be waiting. Ooh, I have an opportunity to make a murderer be enslaved forever. Slave hunters with the foul and not eagerly brandishing their weapons. His master's paying well for his return, and I'll see that you're given a fair cut. All right, I'll be back. Hurry along. Don't want him getting skittish and doing something foolish. Besides, we're eager to return to a more hospitable climate. She suppresses a shiver. Glug Glug only condones slavery when he is in evil mode. Which ironically is a lot on this channel lately. 
What the fuck? Ice blights. Those are interesting looking. Very weak, too. You guys think about that? Hmm? Let's burn this away! I think Pelagina's fucked up, that's what I think. to be taught <laughs> still alive <laughs> she came back to one hit point Well, she is maimed. Minus 15 accuracy, minus 15 to all defenses. Yes. Luckily, we have some stuff to take care of back in town, so let's retreat! your hand, Jay. What I found I the for? ingredients you asked for. Still say a little hardship ought to put some sense into that man. But if you're set on giving him a hand, so be it. Give that here. There. Get him to down that and he'll be right as rain. And you can tell him he owes you one. I would have let him stew for at least a year or so. Thank you. Back to warm your hand, Jay. I need what to rest up. I'm pretty fucked up. On it? I like this. Uh uh, what? Huh? Bad dreams. Never mind. Your eyes open to a familiar scene. Durance is sitting with a staff laid across his lap, a malignant flame sprouting from one end. He is difficult to make out, his features soft, bleeding together, but the staff you see clearly, its etchings aglow in molten orange. Though Durant's face is difficult to distinguish, there is no mistaking the hardened expression, the furrow brow. His voice hisses and sputters, low and un unintelligible, as though having a private argument with the staff. Traces of spittle catch the firelight as they fly from his lips like sparks. And to your surprise, there is a female figure behind him. You are about to call out a warning when you realize that it is the Magrin statue where you met Durant at the fort. Yet, she seems almost alive for a moment. Her cast shadow seems as if it were moving, cloaked. Then it is still, frozen with the night at its back. There is something odd about one of the symbols, a circle of twelve smaller circles. One of the small circles grows brightly, but the other eleven give off little light. They flicker and fade like dying embers. Between his hissing curses, Durrance lowers his face close to the staff and blows on the fading circles with panic rapidity, quaxing light from them, but they do not ignite. One by one, the light of the circles dies, and smoke rises from their ashes. Only one still burns. Durrance hurls his staff at his feet, and it clatters to the ground. Its edges have become soft, difficult to find. Like its owner, the staff has become a blur. You close your eyes and reopen them, and Durrance is there, picking up his staff from the ground, but the blur is gone. 
and you are awake. Huh? Uh oh, time to get to know Durds even more. Mm, clap my hands, can't wait. Actually, I will wait. As you wish. Isn't a uh, little punk ass in here? Any progress with Devala? Ah. Let's save. Make it back up. In case there's multiple outcomes that we can take a look see at. Any progress with Devala? She said you agreed to your indenture and that you killed a boy in your escape. And I thought you were going to get rid of Devala, not sell me out to her. He takes a deep breath, but his eyes are still focused on you. What she said is true. I had a gambling problem when I was younger. I've paid seven years of my life for it. I won't pay any more. As for the boy, I didn't want to hurt him. But he saw me as I was sneaking out of the stockade. The soldier's shoulders go limp, and his gaze is a distant memory. He shakes his head. I wish it had gone differently. But I'd do it again. Anything to keep from getting sent back to that place. Calm down. I killed the Fala anyways. You can go. Sorry. I've been on the run too long. But thank you for your help. Take this. And tell Hafrik he can keep the rest of the week's rent. I'll be out of his way soon enough. Yes. He's gonna get fucked. Oh, we have a quest here that I overlooked. A fellow farmers in Exeter Plains discovered a large and elaborate ring and small outer pillars in a secluded southern valley. Though presumed to be connected and and within in some way, the pillars do not appear to be connected to any runes. However, since the site was discovered, farmers from up to 50 miles away have gone missing, eventually discovered days or weeks later in the Ring of Stones, permanently petrified. As the Afulio have little experience in other pillars, they are calling upon Red Syrians, Deruidians, and Gladden Fathoms to help. Um, a mother will know about this. Soul Hunter has arrived seeking employment. She was nearly set upon by brigades on the road, but your patrols intervened. She's a plus two and a plus three. We'll hire her. She's a guest, I guess. Does that mean she doesn't stick around forever? I paid us seven years and he's about to pay another seven. <laughs> you have to help me. Ugh, I can't stay like this. Unfortunately, we have no evil option to shatter it in front of his face. I got an alternative. Here, Averick said you that's all to do it. Really? Oh, on to bless you. Give it here, please. Ugh! Frothy! I... Hey! You did it! I can feel again! He prods at his forehead and sticks out his tongue. Oh, thank you. You're a saint among kith. And I owe you one, I know it. I would have ended up a leper. Averick never did have any sense of proportion. Hey, here. Now that my hands are working again, I've been stitching this together for a while. Least I can give you, really. 
And now I'm uh, going to stand here and breathe for a little while. That's what you think. Breathe. Ah! Little while is over. Yes. You guys didn't see nothing. Shut your fucking mouth. He had to go. It's line of dexterity, of course. Also, minus 10% armor speed penalty. These often favor gloves, boots, and other clothing that makes them nimbler and stealthier. Gloves like these are smooth and tight-fitting, and the leather pads often over the fingers and palms help the wearer grip anything. A narrow ledge, priceless goblet, a razor-sharp dagger more easily. Could be good for our wizards, mainly because it will allow them to cast even faster. Restore my plus one perception. I'd rather have the dexterity over that. And now the recovery speed of his armor should be minus five percent. got the dex plus two. Restore light endurance three per rest. I mean, that's nice, but we've got plenty of healing going on as it is, so. something to ail you. I had questions I wanted to ask. If doubts and curiosity plague you, you're skidding your knuckles on the wrong door. I had another vision of you. One of the symbols on your staff. It was dying. You see many things that aren't there, Watcher. Perhaps the symbol was for your disappearing sanity, and we are to bid it farewell while you still have the wits to grieve for it. I saw symbols with 12 circles. What does it represent? That symbol, the God Hammer. Then it was the God Hammer symbol I saw extinguished on your staff. <laughs> no riddle there, Watcher. It took 12 of us to build the God Hammer. Afterward, I took my leave of all of them to see what Margaret had in store for me. I've seen none of them since. Are you sure there isn't more of that story? Your kind has a way of interpreting its visions to fit the version of the truth you like best. But Magrin's flame leaves no room for interpretation. Waste the time of others with your distortions and your fever dreams. Flames distort all that lies around them, and you never seem to be far from a flame. It's always the way of the mad to try to convince others of a reality only they can see. But when your doctrine's the truth, it requires no convincing, only an opening of the eyes. I would purify you, Watcher, if I thought it would help. I want to ask something else. The cost of troubling me seems to worry you little. Tell me more about yourself. Did we really not ask any of this? Tell me about Ashfall. The amount you ask, you think you'd miss it more than I. Stockpiles of guns, explosives, and alchemical fire sounds dangerous. Life is dangerous. You would know more than most. Flame is always hungry if you don't respect it. Kisses will fire your loins like Divine's Bay Copper Corner whore. Durrance closes his eyes for a moment as if thinking back. Some chambers were consumed, some destroyed, but Ashfall remains. But it would be good to see one day if I return. I doubt I shall. Why's that? 
Because home is a mess of disappointments, that's why. Never make a place your home, Watcher. That's my advice to you. Keep to the road. A home is a curse. It will kill you to stay. And the moment you fought exits its door, it will never again measure up to the cathedral in your head. Dern's grunts, his hand tightening on his staff. You notice Edder's been listening. He speaks under his breath. Don't know if it's a problem so much a cathedral in his head as bats in the bell tower. Sure am sad, though, that I missed the party that must have thrown as soon as he'd left. Now that's a donut disappointment. Is that why you wander? I'd expect you to understand, Watcher. You don't seem to value whatever home you are from either, and you are likely a stronger person for it. So, if it's why you ask why of it, Watcher, then why doesn't one need a cathedral to uphold faith or remind one of it? I don't hate it. I don't despise it. I'm not some weeping, cast-out fool. I wander because my faith, and to spread it, he grunts. And I have many tens of years to go before Durant's trials let me go. And I'll never get there while I'm bantering words with you. But then who's more the fool? The fool who asks, or the one who answers? <laughs> I tire of your wordplay. Let's do something. <laughs> I suspect the answers will seed more questions. Tell me about Magrin. Some. Shaped for hunt and war. Abidan the Golem. Galawain and his beasts. The latter keeps us honest and awake. The other makes the tools by which we punish those who are not. Happy Don. Not surprised you haven't heard more gods than weeds in a field, and those are the only ones of a lifetime. They come and go, but they're always here at the same time. Abby Don used to look human. <laughs> Got killed and built a new body for himself. Transformation with Magrin's help. Perhaps she needed her own blacksmith to tend the fires. If so, Abby Don deserves it. Durns frowns. He's a weapon, a tool, not a god in my mind. Still, the people of Deerwood, the cities, especially hold him dear, so be it. Although if the reward for hard work and craftsmanship is a body like his, I'll keep my blood in my cock and hips to thrust it with. Interesting. By the way, this game is not for younger players. Because we have dwarves talking about their cocks and stuff. You also mentioned Galloway? Monster Father, the great hound, and as for the monsters, this world was quite a bit, and not just the ones on two legs. It's as if he made monsters solely to hunt them, to remind men of their place. He's busy making more, I suspect. More monsters than sense, variation upon variation. <laughs> what do you mean? His aspects are confusing, Punch, and considered he respects reversals of fortune, especially in Beast. Perhaps not so confusing. No reason why Magrin and his share are bad, in my eyes. Even if he does believe in the trial, a filthy old and god in many ways, howling and mewling perhaps like they do, they can keep their beast. I'll take fire and weapons any day. Who are her enemies? Are you a servant to Whale? Let the mysteries and questions remain with him, at least until the next time we need rest. What is All it? Alright, we talked Durant's his fucking ears off. Let's go see how our little buddy's doing with the slavers. Looks like you met up with your friends, bud. <laughs> you know, if adventuring doesn't work out, you've got a real future in the slave hunting business. She nods to Elif, who hands and ankles are chained. You sold me out! I knew it! I never... One of Defala's men slaps him and he falls silent. As promised, here's your payment. A pleasure doing business with you. Sweet titties! Thank you! Bye bye, slave! Still, the stone's completed. Wow, that was quick. The trip to the Expertel Plains was largely uneventful, but Grieving Mother discovered a grisly sight upon arriving at the Afulio Address Circle. Over 50 locals had become permanently petrified among the stones. It took a few days of investigation, but Grieving Mother learned that the abductions all happened at a specific time of night and a pattern for miles around the stones. 
With the assistance of an affiliate mathematician and philosopher, Grieving Mother was able to expose the killer, an extremely powerful a dragon that had been protecting the Adra Circle for centuries. With Kit discovered the secret place, when Kit discovered the secret place, she began systematically stalking and petrifying anyone who lived within the walking distance of the site. Grieving Mother led a protracted battle against, battle against the creature with the help of the locals. Some experience, some money, and a minor item. A mossy rock. This curious rock can be used to summon a swamp liquor once. What do you fucking do? Shady! As you walk toward the frozen pond, a figure appears through the mist. Kneeling down next to the hole of the ice, the figure picks up a large chesticle and throws it into the water without hesitation. The figure looks around. You glimpse a face you've seen before. It's Quetzal, one of Lafta's acolytes. He pulls a hood over his head and throws a leather bag over his shoulder. Without looking back, he walks away in the direction of the Stelwar village. That bitch is a liar! Lug Lug will get it! Me have balls of steel! As you, you should test that ice with something heavy. Nah. Make sure it's safe. I'm good! Maybe with a, an overweight priest that can't shut up. Ha ha ha! Got him! Cloudy water is visible through a large hole cut through the thick ice. It is larger than a fishing hole, wider than a broad set amua. That's me! Stir the surface of the water laps. Stir the surface of the water laps against the layered ice. You reach out to test the water. It nips your fingers with every ripple, quickly numbing your hand after a few seconds. You carefully inspect your surroundings. Animal tracks are plentiful, but what appear to be footprints of kith are also present near the hole. Looking closer into the hole, you notice a jagged ring of frost adhering to its walls. It's been rebroken, perhaps more than once. Let's look through the water. The water swirls, silty and nearly opaque. You attempt to see through the murk, but can make out nothing in particular. Time to dive in! We're going to cast Bulwark against the elements first. Ronstock begins to drop energy out of the ether and into the grimoire. There's a sudden flash of light and an open page, and you are bathed in a protective aura. You dip your hand in the water. You can feel its ripples climbing up your skin, but you notice no change in temperature, as if the water itself has become lukewarm. The cold, it seems, is no longer a threat. You dive into the water. The turbulent darkness engulfs you, but the embrace feels almost warm and welcoming. Occasionally, a cold shiver runs through your limbs, but protection offered by the spell lets you swim with ease at the bottom of the pond. Directly below the hole at the very bottom, your hands find heavy objects made of wood and metal. They are chests, small but heavy. You start to bring them up to the surface one by one, struggling to carry their weight through the water. After a heroic effort, you come out of the frozen pond. You let a few minutes pass to recover from the ordeal, and then you're ready to inspect your findings. The chests are marked with the symbols of Andra. You grab one of them and pry its lid open to reveal its contents. Inside, all you see are rocks. You shake the surprise off and grab another chest. The same result greets you after opening it. More rocks and nothing of value. Something is assuredly amiss. As proof of your findings, you take one of the empty chesticles with you. Uh-oh! Some bitch is lying! Teeth marks upon the deer bone suggest a large predator. Charge!
I didn't think that battle was gonna last long. Well? As you wish. The simple shrine is covered in a thick layer of snow, fallen leaves and feathers. A pair of curving bones flank the altar. The shrine does not appear to be frequented very often, although traces of old candle wax line the edges of the stone. Under a dusting frost, you note a rectangular section of the altar's surface that seems to be cleaner than the rest, as if something once rested here. You feel a tingle run up your arms as you set your fingers to the altar, and an instant after, the wind seems to die down, and the sounds of the wilderness grow muted to your hearing. Then you hear a sudden low growl, quickly joined by more. The vision strikes you like a sudden memory, though it is unbound by time or place. Within a sea of darkness, you see a great beast, formless save its gleaming fangs. It growls and snaps with increasing desperation and savagery, and for a moment you feel its rage as your own, a possessive fury that tears at you. Something has been taken, your territory threatened, and for the price there will be blood. The vision fades just as swiftly as it came. The altar stands silent and still, and the air fills again with the occasional trill of birdsong. Pissed off the great wolf. All kinds of herbs and spices around here. Pointless beast, you won't get anywhere being stubborn. The ogre only snorts angrily and pulls back on the rope. Two other elves prod him somewhat timidly with their pole axes. The ogre does not budge. Hey, Vermeil! One of the elves has turned around to look at you, motioning at the man occupied with the ogre. The elves turn around, your hands falling to the weapons. Vermeil gives a final sharp yank on the rope before he turns as well. What are you doing to that ogre? This creature will accompany us to Westeran. We've had some trouble on the roads, but having an ogre along should put an end to it. I purchased him from some slave hunters not far from here, looking to recoup their expenses, I expect. Not sure what he's worth. Not sure he's worth so much coin. I'm gonna punch you in the face! I'm related to ogres! He stride forward purposely and knocked the elf flat with one solid blow to the jaw. The other elves turned startled. As they heft their weapons, the bound ogre takes advantage of the commotion and hauls backward, tearing the rope free of his captors. With a triumphant roar, the ogre pulls apart the bindings on his arms. Stop that ogre! And don't damage my property! And bring me that fool's head! <laughs> you gonna pay! That's not very helpful. <laughs> The ogre evil, evil, I just helped him out. What? Huh. Ah, I heard that. Rock. That's it. Trying not to hit the ogre. Mm -hmm. 
As you wish. Bitter cut, a one-handed saber. Apparently, no matter what you do, it all ends in a fight, so I don't feel bad about that. I'm not sure we could have done anything for the... Ogre, but... It was right as soon as it started, nothing I could do. Still isn't taking that much damage. Bitter cut. The saber belonged to the first mate of Hangman's Bounty, a notorious pirate ship that roamed the Deadfire Archipelago three centuries ago. Legend has it that the crew seized a slave galley, and after killing the masters, decided to sell the slaves at the next port. One of the slaves, an elderly man with a scarred face and black beady eyes, came forward and demanded that he and his fellows be set free. The pirates laughed and refused him, but the old slave persisted. He warned them of terrible plagues and punishments awaiting them if they still yet refused. When he raised his voice in anger, the first mate drew her saber and ran him through. Putrid green bile poured from the wound, running upward along the sword, while the sailors watched in horror. The corruption spread from the dying slave's chest to the first mate's saber and arm, filling her veins with venom and her flesh with squirming maggots. The rest of the crew drove the ship aground and fled, leaving the slaves to flee and the first mate to rot next to her tainted blade. I like the sound of that. It grants infestation of maggots once per rest. 10% damage AoE. And vile thorns. Seventeen to twenty-four damage. I like having this bludgeoning weapon. Bet you we can make this sword badass too. Ooh, yeah. Let's do it. Plus eight accuracy, plus thirty percent damage. <laughs> And we're gonna make it have plus 25 crow damage. <laughs> it's an evil fucking blade. Look at the bitter cut now. 20 to 29 corrode slash damage, plus 25% corrode damage, 8 accuracy, plus 30% damage, minus 10 defense against poison attacks. Is that against me? Should I should be immune to that shit. We're gonna wanna get rid of this. Oh yeah, look at that saber. We'll go dual wield bludgeoning and slashing now. Keeping that one handed saber there. It actually does more damage than uh, Lick his labor. That's a great weapon, though. That's superb. It's got that superbness. Try out the new saber, though. 
wouldn't be bad to dual wield with bitter cut as well. Um, hmm. I'm not sure how effective dual wielding is in this. Hopefully it's worth doing. But I haven't seen any specific abilities for it. Boots of speed? Sweet. So great for our barbarian. To get him the back ranks when needed. Give up a constitution point just for that. You got plus 30 against prone attacks, 15 against push attacks. That's good. We kind of want that for you since you're our tank. Two athletics, 15 max endurance, plus one constitution. Uh, let's go ahead and give these to you. You won't see me coming. Hold off on returning to town until the next video. Yes. Do a little research and see what the best outcome to deal with these Andra bastards is. Look at this Poe. See if we can break this ice. I don't want to see it. Oh! Fuck that bear up. This bear has no chance. still alive. Bear is fucking toast. Got his hide, too. Hello! Now oh, fuck that. Messy engagement. Those motherfuckers!
what is it? Got a little bit of a windstorm coming. Cool effects, cool effects. Whoa. Got us a cave. Margaret's fire casts light in dark places. All right, folks, that wraps it up for this episode. Stay tuned for more Pillars of Eternity, the White March expansion. Soon to come.